G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today we're going to take a look at a video called I Swiped on Tinder 143,489 times and here's what happened. I found this to be quite an interesting video because it shows you the mathematics uh, and analytics behind uh, essentially, essentially the success rate um, of an average guy on these dating apps. So let's, uh, let's jump in, have a bit of a laugh, I'll make some comments along the way. Online dating and statistics. Now, as a math graduate myself, I find it to be a match made in heaven, which is probably why I didn't get many matches in the first place. But I don't know if you know this, but legally speaking, all of these online dating apps that y'all use, they have to give you all the data that they hold on you if you request it. That's thanks to GDPR. And so your boy requested all of his data. I've been using all these dating apps for a very, very long time, since college even, Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, and the like. I used to use loads more, but those seem to be the big three that most people use. Now, strap yourselves right on in, because I think this is gonna be one of the most interesting videos I've come up with. I'm going to be parsing and going through all of the data that was provided to me by Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge to see what is the most effective app for getting me matches, relationships, and whatnot, and or which has the best experience over time. Now, first off, right off the bat, I'm gonna say first off, I think different guys have different levels of luck on the differing dating apps. I can tell you now, I never had much luck on Tinder. I, have, I know mates of mine who swore by it, said it was like shooting fish in a barrel. I struggled on there, I couldn't get much. And if I did, it was pretty low quality type stuff, big fat chicks from out in Packingham, um, you know, out in Bacchus Marsh or Werribee or Melton or something like that, you know, having to get in the VN and drive all the way out there to slay a few chicks behind cricket. Like, I'm not going to say I didn't do it, but I wasn't the greatest experience. <laughs> but I always found Bumble and Hinge for me um, were good, and I've heard other guys say that the chicks on there are snobby and stuck up. So it'll be interesting to see what this guy's experience was. Bat, we're going to be going with Tinder. Now, I've been using Tinder the longest. Also, I should just clarify, I'm no longer on dating apps because I found someone. We've been going pretty steady. Pretty steady, actually. Uh, no arguments. Not one. That's a red flag. When's the first one happening? Keep me on my toes. Anyway, so first one I've got some data for is Tinder. Now, I've been using Tinder for an incredibly long time. I mean, right here, my Tinder Insights says here, I've swiped 143,489 times. That's just a pretty good big commitment. If you work that out today, it's... So six years, you're looking at around 2,000 days. So he's got 2,261 days, just to say that. So he's got 143 divided by 2,000. So it's like 70 swipes a day. I hope that's the right maths there. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Quick maths here. Holy crap, okay? That is a lot of swipes. Evan, that sounds like you had quite a good success rate, right? Well, of those, 109,000 of them were swipe lefts. Listen, I'm a picky man. I swiped right on 33,702 people. All right. Far out. I reckon mine would be the opposite of that. It'd be everything swipe right. Just brrr, they call it the walking fingers, mate. Just get the screen and smash it and work it out on the back end. Don't be picky on there. You got to take what you can get when you're out there. Monster hunting lads. Getting in. Now scrolling down. How many matches of those 33,702? I got over 1,000 matches. Now I do just want to note, this data is based on six years. So 1,122 matches over six years. All right. Now of those... How many of those 1,122 did I actually chat with? 229. Oh, see, we just keep taking fractions <laughs> of a fraction of a fraction. Now, most of the time it's me. I'll just swipe right on someone and then go, ah, I don't really know if this is gonna let you know you're like, oh, you're attractive, but I don't really know what else to go off of. The amount of people that have profiles with just nothing in them, what am I supposed to do? Who cares, dude? Go off the pictures, try and find them and have sex with them. That's what they're for. They're not there to find wives. People say, oh, I'm on a dating app to find a relationship. No, dating apps are for having sex, mate. Like, sure, relationships do come out of them. They do happen, absolutely. But the first port of call is getting them down behind the cricket pavilion. That's what they're there for. And then you work it out from there if you want to have a relationship. You don't go analyzing profile like a chick and trying to ascertain all the different information and try and, you know, make a behavioral charts and uh, have a statistics and dossier of what they're like who gives a fuck if they're half decent swap on them try and get some sex and work it out from there nice hair i don't know give me some something of sustenance all right now of these 229 chats i actually went on 12 different dates you do run wow. into a lot of issues on these apps where you'll just have a nice back and forth but then you never end up that's pretty grim so he's got a thousand matches and 12, 12 dates 
I mean, yeah, I reckon that's pretty low. Like, I would think even for an average guy, he's probably a bit below average. Not had no shade at this guy, but pure facts. A bit below average, but bit you know nerdy. Probably not most girls' cup of tea on a dating app. He's probably invisible to most women. So he's gotten twelve dates out of over a thousand matches. <laughs> What's that, 1.2%? Even less, because it's 12 dates out of 1,100. So you're looking at about 1% rate there. You got a relationship out of one of those 12. I mean, hey, it's worked for him. I really would love to see my chart here. Meeting someone. Some people just want the affirmation that, oh, this person finds me attractive, but they don't actually plan on meeting up. So of these 12 dates though, how many relationships? One, actually. One relationship. I don't know what I can say, really. I, I've been They're missing a key point. They're missing a key point. I know you guys can't see my my cursor, so I, I'm I'm hovering over the marriages section there. You got these guys, these blue pill dudes, and I don't really like throwing that thing around, but it's probably the best description of a guy like this, like a normie. Thinks that marriage is the be all and end all, and it's going to make your life better. There's one more line that needs to come below that: divorces, and then one more divorce graping with his asshole split open. And if that's zero, then that's good. In one relationship, kind of. We weren't official, but we dated for like four months. So one relationship, 2014-ish, and for the most part, otherwise, no real success on Tinder. From my experience as a guy on the app, it is quite difficult to get matches at all, and even those that you do, it's just difficult to do anything else with that, unless you give Tinder money. The way that this app mostly works these days is if you give Tinder, like the Tinder gold, you give them like, what is it now, 20, 30 pounds a month, you then get raised so that way women that log into the app or uh, i don't think it's going to help this guy you know um, as i said not bagging guys everyone's genetically born different but he's not helping himself with his style choices his hair and all that stuff i'm not into looks maxing and all that shit guys i'm just being realistic here he looks like sort of shaggy off um like a nerdy shaggy off um scooby-doo uh, pure facts so he's not helping himself i don't think him paying the 30 dollars or 30 pounds or whatever that is is going to help him now i've never paid one cent on any dating app ever and um, did quite well on them. But yeah, I'm tall and all that. I have um, certain qualities that women like. I'm not I'm not going to say that I'm a normal guy, but I wouldn't say I'm a super chat or anything either. Gift of the gab, guys. Gift of the gab. All right. Or whoever you're looking for, well, they will then have you at the top of their feed as opposed to anyone else. And so with the amount of right swipes that women get on this app, as it is mostly populated by men, you're going to run into issues where if you're not paying, you're not really seen. Hi, I have an editor here. I felt like it might be interesting to actually talk about the exact pricing model that Tinder uses. I did at one point for like two months try out Tinder Plus, but I felt like it didn't actually do anything. And you just get unlimited likes, unlimited rewinds, and you can change where you're located to, I don't know, see other girls from different areas or other people from different areas. However, that was 19.49 a month. That's they extortionate amount of money. I I remember when I was back on them, and oh, this is over five years ago, six, seven years ago, and I was going pretty hard on them. It wasn't that much, and and there's only one tier of membership. It was like the the Bumble, yeah, paid membership, and you got everything. Now there's like all these five different tiers, and it's all expensive, and it sort of upsells you on each one. I, I heard there was some five hundred dollar a month Tinder one, so it's absolutely bonkers these days. We have Tinder Gold, which I underestimated the price, is £29.49 per month. And can you believe, Tinder Platinum, oh my god, £38.99 a month. That is just, it's just horrible. Like, that is just horrible. Uh, and then there you go, people actually might see you when you swipe for £38, or just use any other app. £38, or pounds, that's like... What's that, like a double? I don't know the exchange rate, but it's like, what's that? Yeah, let's say, let's assume it's double. It's 80, 80 bucks Australian. Just to go on a stupid dating app. Yeah, I think it's really, um, they prey on men, and they're not there to help men find um, dates. They're just there to um, fleece men who probably aren't going to have much luck anyway out of dates by promising them, sorry, they're not going to get much out on there, out of that money they spend and out of the membership, because they're fleecing them. With the hope that if they give money, that they're going to have magic success with women out of nowhere. So that is pretty, in my view, quite predatory. But that's the nature of these businesses. The women aren't the target market. The women are the product. 
and the men are like, oh, they're the product too. I guess they got to buy shit. But women are the product that the guys are trying to buy using this app as a medium. I never paid one dollar for it. I know guys that have paid. My friend Larry, he pays for it. Said it's shit. So, but still pays. Or got go to a bar. Geez, I'd be buying drinks at that rate. Now, out of this activity, we've got a little bit more information. I opened the app 1,551 days. That's a lot. Here's also an interesting one here. We got, I swiped on 1,416 days. I chatted 179 days. And on 153 of these days, I literally opened the app. I didn't swipe or chat. Oh my God. At one point, it looks like I had 50 times in a day I opened that app. Jesus Christ. Sometimes you get real desperate, guys. You've reached the swipe limit 29 times. What can I say? Jesus. My most active days were Saturday and my least active were Friday. I, that's quite interesting. Don't know why. 78 left swipes and 24 right swipes on average per day. All right. So basically I swipe right on what? 25% roughly. All right. Now I had 229 chats and of those, essentially nearly 50% of them, I didn't reply to someone else's opening message. You got to be really interesting. And also I just go, ah. It's such a weird place, online dating. My chat usually lasts 22 hours. I last almost a day. <laughs> and then it just fizzles. Like I said, Tinder's not quite- This is quite depressing, I must say. This is quite depressing. So I can understand why a lot of guys get um, fundamentally jaded by these apps and just give up on them or, or it causes their mental health issues because you're paying all this money, feeling like you should be getting some more attention out of it. And you're just getting really um, your self-esteem eaten away and you're paying money for it quite the best for holding a good conversation. All right, about the same amount of received as it is uh, sent messages. I send 25% more than I receive. That makes sense, trying to get out there. Oh God, have you run an ultra marathon lately? Because you've been running through my mind all day. Listen, I'm no. the pun. I make puns. It's a no. bit cringe, but they said they were into ultra marathon. I'm gonna run off that. My number one chat up line is just make an original chat up line based on something they're interested in and throw a pun in there. That shit doesn't work, dude. Things that don't work out. I don't have a puppy. Listen, women just want men with puppies. In terms of pickiness, it seems I swipe right on 23% of people, whereas the average of men is 40% and the average of women is 7%. So I'm in the- Wow, that's really interesting. I thought it would have been less than that for 7%. I, would have, I thought it would have been like 3% or something like that, women swiping. Men swiping on 40. Very, very interesting. I thought it would have been more. As I said, a lot of guys that I know as well, similar approach to me on the dating apps, the walking fingers just on the screen and work it out on the back end. So that, I thought that would have pumped up that stat. In that sweet spot right there. Now, I match with 3.3% of the people I swipe right on, and women match with 33. <laughs> Men match with 2.5%. So that's right, I'm 0.8% better than average. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Average number of swipes per day. I'm 101. Oh, wow. Interesting. Women? What? Wow. So women swipe more than men. This is something I'm learning. I guess you have a lot to go through, right? 200 a day for women, whereas it's 137 for men. Fascinating. And I'm on the small end of the spectrum, so... Except where it counts. You know what I'm talking about? YouTube subscriber numbers, okay? Thank you for subscribing. Anyway, COVID-19 statistics... I'll give him that. He's got a good um, swiper uh, uh, subscriber base. 801k. Good on him. All right, guys. So I'm going to stop at halfway three. If you're enjoying the content, please sub to my channel. Um, sitting around 80-ish thousand, trying to get to 10. Hopefully one day get to 801K, like uh, Evan Edinger here. Um, but yeah, the best way you can help me out, guys, watch my videos through uh, as much as you would like to, because um, that watch time is what really pushes me out to more people. Statistics. Was I less picky during COVID? Yeah, it looks like during COVID, I was swiping right on a lot more people. I was like, please, but God, online dating during lockdowns was so horrible. You'd actually get a good conversation then realize you couldn't do anything with it. There's no like, wanna go to the pub? Bleak. Roughly enough, it says here, my match rate is- My COVID would probably be the best time to get action because people are just going to people's houses, are bored, lonely, um, anxious, stressed. Um, I, I was still on it in the early days of COVID and it was on. I had girls coming around all the time <laughs> or going to their places because they had the bubble buddy and you could drive. And it's the only way to get out of the house. So women are way more open-minded to doing that then. There's a lot of action going on.
50% during COVID than before. 1.8%. Yikes. I do think that it has to do a little bit with not being able to meet up with people, but also because I started using Tinder less and less and less as the pandemic went on because the app is just not good compared to the next two apps we'll be talking about. So at the end of the day, one relationship, 12 dates, all these swipes. Would I recommend Tinder? Not really. Genuinely not really. I, I just find it was a way of wasting time. Tin is a waste of time. Now, before I go into the next two, which of course are Bumble and Hinge, which have some even more interesting data, uh, let's jump back in. Okay, so the next app we're gonna be talking about today is Bumble. You see, honestly, I used to like Bumble. I used to think it was so much better than Tinder because it really differentiated itself from Tinder, this app where you don't really know who you're gonna get, it's just all over the place. With Bumble, the ladies message first, that's the entire point of it. And also, you used to be able to have a free filter. So if you wanted to, let's just the say- lady, The ladies message first with the shittest pickup lines I've ever seen, or just really a low effort stuff. And it really goes to show you and what I learned by being on these apps, especially on here. Bumble, is women have got no game. You very rarely come across a really charismatic, funny, witty woman who can sort of catch you um, by surprise. Very, very rare. They want men to be pick up, like perfect pick up dudes who can say all the best lingo and uh, keep them on their toes and give them all the excitement and uh, meet all their requirements with. Um, the stupid job interview that is dating and using dating apps and answering the same question over and over again with different women. What do you do for work? What do you do? Do you own a house? Ba 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 ba. All that same bullshit. All they do is say hi, and then that's it. You get nothing else. Hey, make sure you only look at people that don't smoke or people that have a certain level of education or a certain height. Well, you could do that for free, and it was great. Then they decided to pull back all of those features and make it so, as you'll see, with most of these apps, you have to give them money to get the basic functionality. And so I started using it less and less. Also, despite the fact that women get to message first, so you'd think that out of all the experience on the other apps, most people would be like, oh God, all these terrible openers for men. I'm gonna wow them with, hey, smiley face. I'm not gonna reply. Actually, when I get hey smiley face on Bumble, I literally would just reply Spot with on. hey smiley face because that's the level of effort we're going into, okay? It's just, uh, either way, I'm a salty man. Now, out of this, Bumble gave the worst amount of data. You're not salty, dude. You are very spot on with that point. We are speaking the same language, um, language Evo. Like I said, it's just not an enjoyable app these days. All they gave me was my outgoing yeses, my noes, my incoming yeses and noes. All right. Basically, the only thing from Bumble I'm able to parse here is that I swipe right on 37.5% of people I come across. So, wow, quite a bit higher. I guess that was before they removed the filters and such. And my ratio of incoming yeses to total, 8.1%. That's, that's high, I'd say. I'm pretty happy about that. So 8.1% of people swiping on me, thank you, more than the 3% I got on Tinder. Hi, Evan Editor here, I'm back. So one of the things I forgot to mention about Bumble is it has this really, really horrible feature where every single day it will send you a notification saying someone's messaged you on Bumble, even though they've not, maybe in the past, possibly, but it's just this horrible trigger to make sure that you pick up the device and it's every single day and there's no, yeah, or so I'll check out your matches or I'll get premium, whatever it's called, platinum or whatever bullshit it's called now, um, to see your matches. It's once again very predatory. Don't pay a cent for these things, guys. Create a new account every day. Do it at about lunchtime. See how much interest you can get in a as much of a crowd of places you can get, and that's it. And then delete it. Do it again the next day. That's what I did, and it worked really, really well. Because these apps are good in the terms of that they'll um, give you a bit of a bump when you're free. You start, you start getting all this attention, right? You start getting all these matches. It's psycho psychological the way they've done this, um, and then they take that away from you. Like a t day two, day three, it starts slowing down. You're not getting the matches. You're not getting the um, interaction. You're not getting the validation from getting likes from women. And so you think, oh, hang on. Well, I better pay that eighteen dollars or forty eight dollars, whatever the fuck it is, um, so I can get some chicks. And then you pay that money. And you didn't have any chicks there anyway, or any ones that you wanted. Now, I haven't paid, but as I said, my good friend Larry tells me all about it, how much bullshit it is paying for it. No way of turning it off. I believe Tinder does this same exact thing, actually. And because if you do turn off this feature, then you don't get notified if someone actually messages you. And since on Bumble, you only have a 24 hour time span to reply, it means that you basically have to suffer with having a 24 hour daily notice to open up the app. Hey, depressed boy, open the app. And I find it incredibly horrible, predatory, and the worst. Also, just- Okay, so basically what we're saying here, I'm gonna skip it through to Hinge because this guy drags on a little bit and he's you know, two thirds through. Let's go to what they say about Hinge. 
I liked Hinge years ago. I think they probably would have changed it by now, but it was great. It was like he was saying, you could get all the filters and stuff. And at that time, I had a bit of an inclination uh, to go um, towards Asian chicks or um, like a Latin American birds. It was awesome because you could filter them. And that's all you got. And I had a really high strike rate with those um, women of those backgrounds. I don't know what it is. I might like just, you know, they say big white guy, you know, think I'm Brad Pitt or something. Hey, I'll take it. Mel Gibson. Hey, I'll take it. But then they took that away. So I just stopped using it because I was just getting big, fat, Aussie white whales. You know, I was going whale watching, harpooning, getting chicks. I was just never going to be interested in single mums and shit like that. So I see what he has to say. We'll play his segment out and then I might call it a day there, lads. Just throwing it out there, I have the creme de la crop, Hinge. Now, most people I know that have met someone via online dating in the last couple years has actually been from Hinge. Am I being paid to say this? No, I myself found my girlfriend from Hinge. A lot of people I know also have. What makes it different? Well, it's algorithmic here. So when I first used the app, yes, this is gonna come off as very insensitive, but I used it because I thought it was hilarious. As soon as you open it, I was given the ugliest, most unattractive looking people <laughs> I thought in the entire world. I would look at it with, with my friends in my room, but like, oh my God, like, what is this app? Who is, this is the type of people using it. They just throw everyone at you. And it's basically like any old dating app. However, the first time you swipe right on someone that you fancy, the algorithm goes, okay, so you're like this type of person. And then the next person, it starts learning and learning and learning until for the most part, from my experience, the first 10 people you're shown each and every day are pretty much like, in my opinion, 10 out of 10 people I would 100% date. I was amazed at just how good this- Yeah, but I would never talk to you back. And I mean, not this guy in general, but what they do is they, they pump it up with people that are way above you. Even myself, my own station in life, getting these real mega hot babes that, you know, as you guys know my theory, like they're all a waste of time and money. But, you know, ones that I know that probably wouldn't go for me because I wouldn't be on their level or their perceived level um, of what they want out of a man, or being a professional athlete or some shit like that. Or a CEO of some company or whatever, those, um, all those gold digger fucking scuzzy moles on, on Hinge um, want. You know, someone ambitious with drive. That I want your normal guys working out at Coles and Woolworths in the uh, fresh fruit and produce section, or in the deli, or bakery for that matter, or any any part of Coles or Woolworths. Anyway, guys, I think that's probably enough here. But what's he saying? They're all shit. Um, my personal experience with I liked Bumble and Hinge. Hinge was awesome for a time there. Then they started scraping it back and making you pay, and I just stopped using it. I think I got banned off it for calling for saying I didn't want to date fat chicks in my profile. Same as Bumble, banned for life off there. Um, so I wouldn't be able to get on if I wanted to. I'm not sure about Tinder. I haven't tried though. I'm not interested in trying, but yeah, mostly am banned from the dating apps. Um, cause as you guys know from my channel, I'm very direct, call out shit. So as soon as it starts, I start throwing it back and they don't like it. And they press the report button on me. And yeah, Tinder just full of scuzzes, single mums, been packing them that you can bang while their kids are asleep in the next bedroom. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this far. Um, and if you did make it, I really appreciate it. Cheers.